July 19th, 1977, just past midnight, a single light burns outside the trailer home of James and Jenny Hicks. Inside, the Hicks begin fighting, and keep fighting long into the night. At 2 a.m., screams drift into a neighbor's open window, and then silence. Babysitter, 15 year old Susan Matley returns from a late night out. I walked into the house and I opened the door, and uh, the way that Jenny was laying on the couch, I knew something was wrong. Clad in a blue bathrobe and slippers, Jenny Hicks lies motionless on the couch. Her head was laying on this wooden arm, and her arm was like over, like, like this behind her head, and the head was there, and her hair was all down in front of her face, and this arm was like laying over it. James Hicks sits in the chair next to his wife, apparently watching TV. Problem is, there's nothing on. The TV was like all fuzzy, and Jim was just sitting there in the reclining chair, wide awake, just staring at this fuzzy TV. Something has gone very wrong inside the Hicks trailer, and the babysitter thinks she knows what it is. I knew Jenny was dead. I just knew it. You know, just the way when I walked in, the way I felt, what I saw. She was laying. The 15-year-old backs out of the living room without saying a word, retreats to her bedroom, and crawls under the covers. A few moments later, James Hicks is standing over her bed. I could feel him breathing on the back of my neck. And I'm like, oh my God, he's going to kill me. I'm going to be dead. I'm going to be dead. And I'm just like, please, praying that everything was going to be fine. Susan Matley pretends to be asleep, and James Hicks leaves. The young girl listens as Hicks goes to work in the living room. And then I heard, like, slippers being dragged across the floor. And in my, my mind, I'm saying, okay, he's dragging Jenny's dead body across the floor. By daybreak, Susan Metley has fallen into a dreamless sleep, and Jenny Hicks has vanished. He came back later that night and told me that he got home and all the lights were on in the trailer, and her purse and glasses were gone. Hicks claims Jenny must have returned to the trailer during the day to get her belongings before leaving again. Jenny's mother, Myra, isn't buying it. Jenny wasn't the type to take off and go anyplace. She wouldn't even go down the mailbox to pick up her mail unless she had one of the kids with her. Myra knows Jim Hicks almost as well as she knows her own daughter and knows Hicks is a man capable of violence. He put her in the hospital one time and he punched her in the back. And I asked him what happened. I thought deep inside that he had stabbed her. But I found out only two days later that he, he had a square class ring. And he had punched her in the back. Myra puts a call in to the Penobscot County Sheriff's Department. On July 23rd, four days after Jenny first disappeared, Deputy Tim Richardson takes a ride out to the TNN trailer park. He questions Hicks about his missing wife. He said he pushed her around. He says, and, and uh, but he says he didn't, he didn't hit her. Finally, it came to a point where he left. He, he left to go to work. Richardson takes a look around the trailer but finds nothing out of place. He does, however, come across a potential witness. And I just, like, breathed. And I went, oh, my God, I can finally tell him. I can get in the car and tell him to get me the hell out of here, you know, because I knew she was dead. I knew he killed her. For four days, Susan Metley has not had a moment's respite. James Hicks has not let the babysitter out of the trailer or out of his sight. When the police arrive, Hicks warns off the 15-year-old. He told me I couldn't say anything, and so I went walking out there, and he stood right beside me the whole time. The whole time, and I'm like, if I say anything, he's going to kill me, he's going to kill this officer, we're all going to be dead. The teenager keeps her peace. She believes it's only a matter of time before James Hicks decides he needs to silence his babysitter forever. Susan Metley holds the key to Jenny Hicks' disappearance, but isn't talking. With no other leads, the investigation loses its focus. Within three weeks, the case is cold. If there was anything at all that was insignificant, uh, very uh, lacking any details that were able to help us five years later. Rachel is forced to start from scratch, walking through the T and N trailer park, 
searching for anyone who might remember James and Jenny Hicks. Almost immediately, the detective strikes a nerve. In 1977, a female neighbor had been afraid to speak with police. Five years later, and with Jim Hicks now miles away, the woman wants to talk about the night Jenny Hicks disappeared. Now, on this night, the woman next door heard screams. She heard fighting, and she heard some thumping, and then silence. And she was convinced that something awful had happened that night. Now, when the officer came to talk to her, James Hicks was present. And this put her in fear of James Hicks, and she chose not to say anything at that time, and she had never been approached since. The neighbor's statement is the first bit of direct evidence implicating James Hicks. Detective Rachel digs a bit more and unearths a second story about a 15-year-old babysitter, a girl who lived in the Hicks trailer home, a girl who left the area right after Jenny Hicks disappeared. The only thing we were able to come up with was that her name was Susan. She was from Massachusetts. She was 15. Mitchell believes the babysitter might hold the key to Jenny Hicks' disappearance. Several weeks go by, however, and he is still no closer to tracking down Susan, the babysitter. In the fall of 2000, James Hicks leads detectives here to a house set back in the woods. A few feet away, police find the skull of Hicks' first wife, Jenny Sear Hicks. The next day, in a patch of woods upstate, the body of Hicks' last victim, Lynn Willette, is unearthed. The investigation is complete. All that remains is sentencing. On December 4th, a serial killer smiles for the cameras. The judge hands down two concurrent life sentences for the murders of Geraldine Towers and Lynn Willette. After 23 years, the killing is done. James Hicks' legacy of grief is complete. He expresses neither remorse nor an understanding of his crimes. The only certainty, it appears, is this. If James Hicks were ever released back into society, he would almost certainly hunt and kill again. Two weeks later, now locked up in a main prison, Hicks continues his conversation with Zamboni and Prosecutor Bill Stokes. He begins with an account of strangling his wife. Did you use your hands? Did you use a belt? No, I used a belt. What was the belt? I had the belt on at the time. You took it off your pants while you had the pants on? Well, he was getting ready for bed and like that. But I was still dressed when I realized what had happened. So you basically strangled her? Yeah. Did you loop the belt through the loop? No, or did you no. just wrap it around the neck? Wrapped it. Yeah. So I'm over here at what used to be the T&N trailer park. This is where Jenny was murdered back in 1977.
low. I definitely heard a disembodied voice. Sometimes when you go to these places, it kind of brings the reality of the story together that where I'm standing is this place where Jenny Hicks died back in 1977. And this is all that's left of What used to be a structure. All of this is just completely overgrown with grass and weeds and there's absolutely nothing left of this trailer park and I have bees swarming all around me so I must have hit a bee's nest somewhere. There is absolutely no doubt whatsoever this is the spot where Jenny Hicks was murdered back in 1977. It was a lot of work trying to pinpoint where this happened at, but I did find it. What you see right here is no doubt what's left of a window section that was on the mobile home as you can see the black trim that was on the mobile home that Jenny Hicks was murdered in. Right in this spot right here is where the pine tree used to sit to the side of the trailer. And this is what's left of that pine tree that was cut down a few years back. an actual piece of the linoleum floor.
this right here was the steps. that led up to the front door of the home they lived in. And the width of these steps is definite confirmation that this is no doubt where Jenny Lynn Sear lived. Right here in this exact spot would have been where the living room were was at where Jenny was murdered that night. All that's left of this place is what looks like a graveyard within itself. My name's Kent, and I know there's some ghost here because I heard from you the other day when I was here. You asked what I was doing here. Well, I'm investigating paranormal activity. I investigate ghosts. And if you'd like to let me know that you're here, feel free to say something. If you're a ghost, anything evil, stay away from me. And don't follow me home. Except for Jenny Sear can follow me home. I'm going to be coming back here at night to do a spirit box session. See if I pick anything up. See if I pick anything up. See if I pick anything up. All right, I do know for sure none of these power lines right here work. They're completely disconnected. There should be absolutely no energy readings here whatsoever. Is there anybody here, please? Jennifer, is that you? Jenny? Right here, in this exact spot, is where the living room is.
based on the video that I looked at, she died right in this spot, right where I'm standing. Jenny, are you here, please? So I am picking up some energy readings on this K2 meter. Jenny, can you touch this device I'm holding? If you're here, to let me know that it's you. Jennifer, my name's Kent. You talked to me before at my house. Did you die right where I'm standing? Is there any way you can talk into this device I'm holding? I can pick up your voice. If you can gather enough energy to say something, please. And if you don't have enough energy, I'll be bringing a spirit box tonight or tomorrow night to try to talk with you, okay? And if you can't talk with me, if you don't have enough energy, touch this device I'm holding in my hand to let me know you don't have enough energy to speak with me. Okay, so I'll be back. Do you know where I live? Okay, I'll be back to talk with you, okay? Or you can talk with me at my house since you know where I live, alright? you remember? Okay. Jenny, do you remember your husband killing you? Jenny, do you remember James Hicks killing you? All right, so I'll be back. Are there other ghosts here on this property? I'm going to take that as a definite yes. And I like her response when I said I'll be back. In the evidence right now, I feel like it's pretty much being contaminated. I'm going to come back here when it's not windy. And I'm also going to come back here at night. Jenny, are you here, please? Jenny, are you here, please? Jenny, are you here, please? Jenny, are you able to talk to me, please? A 
Hello? Jenny, do you know if there's anybody else involved with somebody burying the bodies of you girls? Are you able to answer that, please? Are you able to answer that, please? So I went to Aetna to do the filming at the location where they found the body of Jenny Sear and the other female that was killed from Newport. Anyway, the people weren't home at the time where I, when I went there, but they told me about somebody else to talk to that they knew was around when police back in 2000 found the bodies of Jenny Lynn Hicks and the body of the female killed from Newport. So I went over to that person's house and I'm not going to mention exactly who they are, but let's put it this way, it wasn't good. Anyway, this person asked me, well, what is this all about, after I found out who they are, and I told them I'm doing a documentary on Jenny Lynn Sear. The person's face literally started twitching. And the person's voice completely changed. And this person told me that I needed to leave and I need to leave right now. And that if I ever came back, I would meet the same fate as Jenny. <laughs> Are you able to answer that, please? Do any of you other ghosts know if somebody else was involved besides James Hicks burying the bodies of these females that he murdered? Was somebody else involved with this, any of this at all? And if they were, who was it? Can you answer that, please? And if nobody was involved, just say nobody was. Every time I step in this area right in here, for some reason I get lightheaded. Is there somebody right in here right now? Help?
What is wrong? What is wrong? What do you need help with? Can you tell me what you need help with, please? Jenny, would you like to move on? Jenny, are you able to pass into that light? How many spirits are standing here with me right now? I'm going to white noise. Hello? Can you tell me your name, please? My name is Kent. Why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you here? Can you tell me why you're here, please? Did you die on this property? How did you die? There's somebody in here. Why do you stay in here? Can you answer that, please?
Would anybody like to say anything before I leave? All right, nobody's allowed to come to my house. You're not allowed to follow me. Jenny, I'm sorry about what happened to you. Is there anybody else here, please? Would anybody like to say anything before I leave? Maybe one day I'll come back and do a thorough paranormal investigation of TNN Park here. I'm going to take some snapshots as soon as it gets darker. And then I'll be leaving. A lot of noise corruption here. It's too bad because I feel like I feel like there's a lot of evidence here that's contaminated due to all the noise. This is just not a good place to do a paranormal investigation. I mean, I'm right next to Highway 2 right here. And I would have thought this time of the day the traffic would have been a lot more quiet, but it's not. In the fall of 2000, James Hicks leads detectives here to a house set back in the woods. As Vance Tibbetts watches, a forensic team pulls his sister's remains from a shallow grave nearby. A few feet away, police find the skull of Hicks' first wife, Jenny Sear Hicks.
はいはい。They found Jenny Lynn's skull. I had to quietly come out here. I'm here in Etna at the site where these girls were buried. And I was pointed in the direction that this is as close as I can get to it. But I'm standing on the actual spot. Where these girls are buried. But I have to be discreet because there's a person real close to this property that threatened me the other day. And I told the people that now owns this property that I'd be very discreet about it. I'd be in and out really fast. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can pick anything up here. It's raining out, and I really don't didn't want to do this in the rain, but I, I got to get it done tonight. I mean, I don't have a choice. I'm going to leave what the house looks like out of this because it's not really relevant. What's relevant is to where these girls were buried on this property. Is there anybody out here, please? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do a spirit box session. This place gives me the freaking creeps. Hello? Is there anybody out here, please? Does anybody know about the bodies that were buried here in Etna back in 1977 and then in 1982? Does anybody know if there's other bodies buried here besides those two girls? Did James Hick bury more people out here? Jenny, Lynn Sear, are you here by chance? Jenny? Pain? Did you say you're in pain? Is there anybody here with me right now? What's your name, please?
when the white noise. Is there anybody out here, please? Jenny. Jenny's here, are you here, please? Does anybody know anything about James Hicks? Is there anybody here that was killed by James Hicks? Did James Hicks kill more people other than the three women that we know about? Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. It was worth a try. I mean, I don't think that the girls would be hanging out where their bodies are, are buried or where they were buried. I don't see how they'd have any attachment to this in here, so... But I was curious maybe that if there's more than just the two girls buried out here, I don't know. I'm in the garage that belonged to James Hicks. James Hicks worked in a lot of construction and maintenance. This is a welding hose here. And there's a lot of construction type materials in here and I can tell you this by looking at these materials a lot of these materials are very old more than likely dates back to the 1970s so I have no doubt in my mind that this is more than likely the belongings that belong to James and Jenny Hicks I did find an old newspaper clipping that had a date on it of 1976 and all this stuff. I set it down, but I don't know what happened to it. It's gone. Anyway, these clothing articles definitely date back to the 1970s. And from what I understand, when Jenny disappeared and James Hick left this trailer that they both lived in a lot of the belongings were left behind and stored in this garage that's what I was told and let's face it this stuff is from the 70s but what's really strange Lynn Louette who was murdered in Brewer after James Hicks dismembered her body her body parts was put in buckets and filled with concrete. 
And what's really eerie here is the number of buckets that's sitting here right now. What's even more strange is this tool right here is used for concrete. I personally believe there is no doubt that these were the belongings of James Hicks. Now, it is my understanding that there was a very good possibility James Hicks dismembered Jenny in this garage. That was never ruled out. Is it possible that he dismembered her and placed her body parts in buckets and then drove the body parts to Etna to dispose of her? I think it would have been very noticeable if James Hicks was carrying a body from the trailer out to a car. Neighbors could have seen that. But if he dismembered her in this garage and carried her out in different sections, that could explain why nobody saw it. I personally believe, based on using just common sense, that James Hicks did dismember Jenny right here in this garage. Did James Hicks have an evil spirit in him? All right, so I'm going to do a spirit box session. Anybody in here, please? Jenny, are you here? Did James, your husband, dismember your body in this garage? Did James, your husband, dismember your body in this garage? Was James Hicks evil? Did he have an evil spirit in him? What kind of spirit is in this garage right now? Thank <laughs> you. 
Jenny, the year is 2018. This happened to you 41 years ago next month. Your kids are grown up. James is in prison for life. Can you move on? What would prevent you from moving on, Jenny? What's wrong? You need help? Is that you, Jenny? Jenny, is that you asking for help? Jenny, you need to pass on. You don't have to stay here anymore. You need to move on into the light. Jenny, is there anything you'd like to say before I leave this garage? Does anybody have anything to say before I shut the spirit box off? I don't know if I got anything off the spirit box. I did hear a female voice that said I need help. But I'm going to wrap up this investigation here on this property. I think I'm done here. I really don't believe that Jenny has a strong presence here. I don't believe that she's attached to anything here. I do believe that more than likely, she just wanders Carmel, but it's possible that she follows me here. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to tell on stuff like this, but it seems like I had better communications with Jenny at my house than I did on this property here, and I just don't believe that Jenny had any attachments to anything that's right here. However, I do believe that there is some residual energy here and I do believe there are other ghosts here. Absolutely no doubt about that. 
and I do believe, no doubt, that there is something evil here. I mean, it's there's a very heavy feeling here, and you, just, you can just feel that there's something not right here. It's just a heavy feeling. Nothing follows me home. You go, spirits or anything in here does not follow me home. Now, the guy that owns this house I'm in here, his name's Doug. Doug owns a lot of properties here in Carmel. And as it turns out, James Hicks at one time worked for Doug. And I find out that James Hicks has been in this house right here. He's done repair work in this house and he's stayed in this house for a short time. Just when I thought this investigation couldn't get any more strange than what it already has, I find this out. Is it possible that's why this house has a paranormal connection to this story? Does this house have a paranormal connection to Jenny? Is there anybody in this room right now with me? Jenny, are you here with me? Jenny Lynn Sear. I know you don't like being called Hicks, so I called you by your maiden name. Jenny, are you here? Hello? Camera's going blurry. Most of the ghost, for some reason, stays in this closet. Are you guys in the closet here?
Okay. Jenny, can you hear me, please? Jenny. Do you know who I am? Jenny, have you ever lived in this house before? Have you ever stayed in this house? Jenny, is that you that's saying help? Jenny, is that you that's saying help? Does anybody have anything to say about James Hicks? Jenny, I really hope you pass on, okay? Jenny, I really hope you pass on, okay? Jenny. Do you know who I am? Jenny, is that you that's saying help? <laughs> Jenny, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Is Jenny here? 
Bora. Jenny, are you able to pass on into the light? Does you, do any of you other ghosts know if James Hicks has killed more than just the three women that he confessed to? Is there more victims that he killed? Do any of you know where James Hicks is at right now? Prison? Where's Jenny Lynn Sear right now? Jenny Lynn Sear Hicks, where is she at right now? Jenny, are you here, please? Jenny Sear, Hicks. Jenny, are you ready to pass on? Jenny, do you not want to pass on, or do you want to pass on? Do you want to move on? Jenny, I really hope you pass on, okay? Are you ready to pass on? Are you ready to move on? Thank you. 
Danny Land. Is there anything you'd like to say? <laughs> At all before I shut this down. Jenny, I hope you move on, okay? Okay, I'm going to go to white noise just for a minute. Jenny, are you here, please? Jenny, are you here, please? Hello, Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Jenny, would you like to move on? Can any of you girls tell me where Jenny's at? Is she here now or did she move on? Jenny Lynn, 
Seer. I hope you can rest in peace. Why I do it? I don't know. Why, why it's done like that?